Well, here we are once again back at the point in time when uh, we're beginning to shift the day again. One shift ends and another shift uh, begins. So notice that the, uh, the stuff that was here is now gone. The box that was there is gone. It's been replaced with another box. I had gotten this a long time ago, a nice basket. And I have my keyboard, the wireless keyboard for the uh, laptop that's in front of me that has the large LED monitors. I have uh, the one I use as Kleenex. I still have to clear up some of the space here in terms of the tablets I use. Uh, one of the tablets has a problem in that uh, it keeps uh, broadcasting on an internal uh, node. In other words, it uh, creates something known as a, uh, a DDoS, a distributed denial of service, where it uh, pings on a very high rate uh, all the other devices on the network, blocking it from accessing the network. Now, why that device is, is like that, I have really no idea, because it's, it's awfully, it wasn't supposed to have that... Uh, it wasn't supposed to be locked, but apparently it, 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 it behaves as if the di device has been locked. But I never unlocked. I never locked it. When I initially got it, it wasn't locked. So what happened to it? I'm not necessarily too sure. So, but anyway, so I turned it off. I do. I will at some point in time turn it back on again. I'll uh, flash the ROM and put on Linux. So that's uh, one of the systems. Uh, so I'm not, I haven't lost it. It's just that uh, I'll be putting Linux on there rather than uh, keeping uh, keeping it as an Android device. And the goal is eventually to uh, merge uh, Linux and Android together to have uh, sort of a, uh, a common platform between Linux and Android. I have Android on all my laptops. This is a, a Linux environment. So I do want to expand Linux into the tablet sphere. Uh, see how it operates, see where the, where it lacks, what needs to be done, what doesn't need to be done. In other words, there's enough that has to be sort of played with in terms of the understanding of Linux and how to how to how to uh, hot load Linux onto onto a a, a tablet type of device, and that will give me more uh, sort of uh, coding experience. People say, "Oh, learn to code, learn to code." Well, the problem is with learning to code, unless you know what you're going to code, and this is the creation of the pseudocode, the pseudocode is developed before the code. It gives you the framework that in which you're going to code. Without the pseudocode, you're not going to be able to do any form of coding. You may know the, the, the different terms and stuff like that. You may know how to do uh, small things. But until you get into the larger structures, and, and have the pseudocode and sort of work out some of the, the, the issues within the pseudocode, uh, your coding is going to lack. And that's where it does, because it, it, as a researcher, as a scientist, it does take a long time to really develop the pseudocode. And it, it can take, take, take you a couple of years before you get into actually uh, bringing things together so enough so that you can actually start developing a coding lab where you can test different ideas out and see how they end up working out. And that's what's happened here. As I've a, 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 sort of grown out of the various different uh, needs that I have, as uh, I've moved into a larger uh, sort of environment, both online and offline, uh, I have the space now, the ability to create a, uh, a, a, a device Linux laboratory where I can start experimenting with various different coding techniques and various different coding options. So that's going to be into this year as well, as long as working on the music studio, uh, doing my music lessons and sort of picking that up. And doing the conversation like this where you're having the sort of deeper, the sort of Sometimes it's deep and sometimes it's not so deep. Sometimes it's just sort of a a, a progress report, if you will. It's, it's sort of letting you know what I've been doing, how I've been doing these different things, 
some of the new things that you're going to be seeing as I fix up the kitchen, as I fix up the place, I'm getting new products coming in, in terms of uh, the unpackaging. In other words, things that I had planned six months ago are starting to come together. And that's typically the way it works, is that you plan things out six months in advance, and bit by bit, as the money comes in, you, you, uh, uh, you complete the project, and then a new project comes in and takes its place. And that's kind of how how uh, things are actually working now, is that you finish one project, a new project comes in. And you expect to be working on that project for, more, for six months or more. It's not like high school, even though I am uh, a tween, the feelings are there as tweens, uh, where a tween will have a project that lasts at most a month. Uh, here, the projects typically last... Uh, six months at the least. Uh, some of the projects we've been working on for atmospheric physics have uh, been working on for close to a decade. Uh, stuff I've been working on for organic chemistry within the body. This is how the body uh, uh, deals with organic chemistry. The different functions that goes on within the body. Some of, the, some of the physiological effects, if you will. I've been working on that for t close to 20 years now. Is What happens is you have textbooks that will tell you in isolated, in an isolated fashion how a particular chemical equation will work, how a chemistry goes. But the thing is, the body isn't like that. The body doesn't have, an, it's not an isolated case in terms of the actual chemical interaction. It's, it's a mixed environment. And you got to sort of figure out, well, how does the body know what to do and when? How do various chemical interactions occur uh, within the structure and the framework of the body? What are the vessels, you know, in terms of what holds the chemistry? What, how, how do chemicals stay separate? How do they interchange with each other? In other words, you look at the, how the body becomes a functioning chemistry set. And it's a different perspective than what you get from textbook. A lot of people actually haven't, even researchers, researchers haven't done that because most of the research right now is focused on drug, drug, either drug discovery or in surgical process. Surgical process uh, focuses, on, focuses on anatomy and it doesn't necessarily look at the sort of the, the chemical aspect of the body in terms of the mechanisms that are not uh, from the bench to the body. In other words, taking the the chemistry from a static environment of the lab, a very controlled environment, bringing it into an uncontrolled environment, and seeing uh, what the functionality is and how these these uh, different reactions uh, change. And so there is a lot of exploration to be done. That is, it, 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 I guess, in many ways, this is what the dream is about. You know, being back in my basement, starting the puzzles all over again. This is where you get into gnosis, and how gnosis can be can cross the line into a lot of different areas. It doesn't have to be one area or the other. And I guess because I'm adding to the puzzle, there is still that, that in terms of the exploration. This is my larger puzzle, rather than spending two, three months putting together a puzzle, now I'm spending six months or more putting together a puzzle. But it's not necessarily something that's fixed in front of me. It's something that's open-ended, and I have no idea where the, where the different pieces are. I have to sort of look out in, 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 in a number of different, direc different directions. And, and you don't always know, you, because you can't predict where you're going to find things. And it's just a matter of, sometimes it's just a matter of getting a better understanding of something. Uh, and a show that's make it, in many ways, from its initial outset, doesn't look to be um, informative. Just the sort of change in thought, the change in pattern of thought, changes your perspective enough that you go, ah, oh, I understand now, or I have a better understanding of something. And that way you go back and you test out your idea, you see to see, okay, this works here and not this works there, and, or maybe it doesn't work so well here. Uh, you know, you look at the different conditions in which your understanding is, exists. 
in terms of its limit, in terms of the capacity, and how much more there is left to know in many cases. And this is what I find absolutely amazing, and this is I was going to sort of save this. We're talking about this whole thing with, with chronic gas, and I can't say the word with, 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 with the pandemic going on, because it's censored. There are certain things you can talk about, certain things you can't talk about. So the things you can't talk about, you change the name, you call it chronic gas. And I think as I said before, chronic gas, you may be allowed because it is the great fart panic, um, is a, it can be a serious issue for people. Uh, anyone who has lactose intolerance, on tolerance knows this, anyone with ileitis, colitis, uh, there's something known as IBS, ir irritable bowel syndrome, uh, the, one, the, the neuromuscular disorder that I have infects the, the uh, intestinal function and uh, the acid-based functions of the body. Well, it's a baking soda volcano. Uh, add add uh, vinegar and acid to the base that is uh, a, a baking soda and you get the nice bubbly gas that comes out of it. This is what you have with Mentos and Coke. It's an acid-based reaction. And so it's the same thing, anything in these, these foaming experiments, where you, it's an acid-based reaction, and that's what creates a lot of the foam, it creates a lot of gas, and that actually occurs in your stomach. Uh, the juices within uh, your stomach that actually do the digesting is hydrochloric acid, and when you put something like milk in there, which is the base, so the hydrochloric acid that is an acid, you put in milk, milk is the base, you have a base acid reaction, you have foaming, you have gas, and it goes out both ends, and this is where it becomes, dis in many cases, it becomes uncomfortable within the GI system, the gastrointestinal system. That So you can call this, you know, chronic gas. But the thing is, when I went and did some research into, on, into CDC and into a number of areas. The areas are lacking to such a degree; it's unbelievable. People, and I saw, I saw, I saw this on LinkedIn. People lie so much about what they can and can't do, and what they know and don't know. They hope nobody catches them, but typically, they lie. Well, they lie their asses off, and it's to prevent themselves from being fired or sued. And it gets to the it gets to the point where this lying even occurs at a very minor level, like in the dictionary. Bring up a word and <laughs> sorry, and they give you an answer, and the answer even even in in, in reputable dictionaries like uh, uh, the Merriam-Webster dictionary, the Webster dictionary, right? Uh, these new these new editions, particularly the digital ones, they don't check their information. The information in there is, is is inaccurate. So you're getting a definition, but it's not the right one. It doesn't work the way it should. <laughs> and I'll give you this. We'll get into this when they come when I come back uh, uh, later on in the afternoon. There will be a package opening probably. Uh, I've been given several indicators that there's, there are packages on the way, but. We'll see, anyways. Um, it just, this is unbelievable. <laughs> it's unbelievable. Uh, and we'll get into more, we'll, we'll get into this uh, uh, in, in a greater detail in our, as our conversation continues. About two uh, two forty six in the morning, no, actually two uh, two hours and fifty four minutes in a minute, almost three o'clock, almost three o'clock in the morning. And I decided to vlog now because uh, I vlog when I can. Uh, it's obviously impossible for me to vlog while I'm asleep, and that's where I spend spending most of my time in the other realm. It's a bizarre thing because. Uh, so the dreams are, are kind of a mixture of new and old. <sighs> you 
Yet, there is a very similar theme. Chasing the things I intend to accomplish, but never entirely, or, or getting the goal entirely, but only getting the goal partially. But I do come out of the dream with new understandings, and one of the bizarre parts is that the question is, do you have somebody else's dreams? Can you dream somebody else's dream? Can, can, can you experience somebody else's dreams? And the overall conclusion that I've come to over the last few years is that you can. It just, it's not, it's not obviously represented that you're having somebody else's dreams. It's, it comes as you're listening to other people talk about their experiences. And you sort of get a sense for how they feel about things. And realize you saw that same thing within your dream. And again, it's hard to, pin, to, pin, to point it down. Sometimes the the realization comes six months later. It comes a year later, two years later. In other words, the representation of what you're seeing doesn't become obvious right away uh, after the dream. It is something that is sort of figured out along the way in terms of your regular life. And it does, it, it, this does represent a, a large chunk of the research they're doing. This is, you know, we talk about this, as, oh, she's talking a lot about gnosis, gnosis and about dreams and stuff like that. What does that have to do with physics? Because I said, well, I'm coming out of this quantum physics and cybernetics. Well, it was Maxwell Planck who, whose research work was the basis of Einstein. Einstein based his work on Planck's work. So that's going to give you your, your references to who Planck was. And he's considered to be the grandfather of, uh, of quantum mechanics. And he opened the door with, with quantum mechanics. At the, the, the time, the door was shutting on the soul... They went, well, everything, we don't have a soul, we're all animals. This was the feeling of Sigmund Freud. This was the feeling of a large chunk of psychology that there was no soul, that man was simply an animal. And this is where, uh, Ed, uh, this is where Edward Bernays and, and picks up from his uncle that we are a bewildered herd. The whole term sheeple and everything like that comes from this perspective that we're nothing more than herded animals. And so, for basically from the from the late eighteen hundreds in, into the early nineteen hundreds on, uh, man has been viewed as an animal, as a herded animal, and that man needs to, uh, particularly the masses, need to be herded in one direction or another. And this is sort of what's going on in the overall environment now, as you're having a herding of people. You have people who have a herd on the left, and you have a herd on the right, and this is. <laughs> Right, people. The people on the right are going to say, "Well, we're not herds. We're not sheep." Well, yes, unfortunately, you are, and you'll see that not only is there uh, herds on the left and right, but in for a variety of different people, the number of people who believe the Earth is flat. You wouldn't think that this would be the case today, but it is, and you will have a number of people believe and say, "Well." It's a government lie. It's a government concern. They're telling you that the Earth is round, that the Earth is a sphere. It's flat. We can know that it's flat. <laughs> and there's not much you can do to sort of explain to them, you know, why it's round. You know, you, even when you bring out something obvious, their their understanding is it, you can see it in their eyes that they're just lost with the explanation. Some of they can't wrap their mind around. So they remain herded in the group that are the people who believe that the Earth is flat. And of course, there's another, the other groups who, the other group who believes uh, the moon landing was fake. That's another herd. Uh, there's the anti-mask crowd. And you see, why, why anti-maskers? Why are they anti-maskers? And you'll see, there's actually a number of reasons for it. There's not just one reason. There's a variety of reasons. Go on to the CDC, those who support masks. Look at the research being produced by the CDC. It's all over the place. There is no 
way you can make a fundamental a a a we'll call it an obvious answer. Most of the answers that are put forward by the CDC are things that are suggested. They have probability to them. There's uh, and they're statistically adjusted. They're, they're not necessarily the the answers aren't obvious. And this is, you even go into the dictionary and look at the term Bobby Soxer. You would think this would be an easy thing to do because my mom was a Bobby Soxer and any, anyone who knows Buddy Holly and uh, 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 in the 50s, that was, you know, the, 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 there was an old TV show called Happy Days. It was the 1950s. But yet they have the Bobby Soxers uh, connected to Shirley Temple Simply because she wore bobby socks, but the style of the of the bobby socks of the teenager wasn't there. That was a child form of bobby socks, not the teenage form. 